Um, thank you so much uh, for coming. Um, we continue to be very excited about what we're doing at International House. Um, both as an African and an American. I guess that makes me an African-American. <laughs> um, I am particularly proud uh, that Simban has been kind enough to attend um, the showing of his film. Uh, I believe he will be coming back uh, at the end of the film to have some dialogue with the audience and we, we all look forward to that. Thank you very much for coming. We hope to see you in many more uh, events at the International House. We continue to focus on our prime uh, objective, which is to act as a, um, a, a forum where people of various backgrounds can interact and understand that at the end of the day, there's only one race, the human race. Um, we, we try to do this, we manifest this mission in three or four ways. This be beautiful building uh, houses uh, students and residents from over 80 different countries who live in peace in one building. Um, uh, in addition, we do it through our arts program, and this is one of our arts programs, uh, our film and our um, uh, author's program. We also do it through music. We have a very active uh, music program. The whole objective is to provide a, an environment where people of diverse backgrounds can interact. And culture is a very significant mechanism through which many people can access uh, a different, sorry, the arts is a very significant mechanism through which many people can access different cultures. So thank you very much for coming and I hope to see you uh, in the movie theater. Thank you. I'm sort of going to change the program just a little bit, uh, Fillmore, because um, I really want to call on Alhaje Nyanji, who is the program director of uh, Radio Halat, which is WURD. And uh, he's from Senegal, and I said to him, you know, you can even welcome uh, Simban and Walaf if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yes. yeah, yes. it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome one of greatest artist, Usman Sembel, who is a world-known writer and filmmaker. And as a citizen of Philadelphia, we wanted to welcome Usman Sembel the best uh, way possible. So through our councilwoman, Jenny Blackwell, we are proud to present Usman Sembel with uh, recognition from the city council and the mayor's office. I would like to introduce council Woman Jenny's Jenny Blackwell representative, Bill Snead. Thank you so much. Good evening. Good evening. It's indeed my pleasure on behalf of the City of Philadelphia, City Council of the City of Philadelphia, to read this citation to Usman Sembe. The Council of the City of Philadelphia is pleased and proud to join with the Philadelphia Museum of Art in honoring Mr. Usman Sembe on the occasion of his new film debut, Modale. Molade. Whereas Mr. Sembe is a trailblazing figure in the evolution of African cinema, at 81 years of age, Mr. Sembe is a most provocative and fiercely independent spirit from Senegal and whereas Mr. Whereas Mulade was the winner of the In Certain Regard Prize at this year's Cannes Film Festival, this is Mr. Sembe's second film in a promising trilogy of the changing role of women in modern Africa society, African society. And whereas Mulade was filmed in a country, in a country village built around one of West Africa's oldest mosques, with the women rise up against the male elders to protect several young girls who, according to the sacred ritual of purification, must undergo circumcision. Mr. Sembe's mature masterpiece clearly documents the internal problems of modern Africa with care and compassion for all of us to see and to feel. Thereby, by virtue of this citation, the Council of the City of Philadelphia hereby honors Mr. Usman Sembe on the occasion of his new film, debuting at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Mr. Sembe has brought life in Africa to America on film, and for this we are extremely grateful. Congratulations. Jenny L. Blackwell, Councilwoman, 3rd District, Anna C. Verner, President, City Council, October 27, 2004.
extend this Liberty Bell and in recognition to Mr. Oliver Franklin for his excellent work. He shall be the presenter of that. Okay. So Mark, would you join me over here, please? <laughs> this is the uh, this is one of the this is a Liberty Bell that actually rings. <laughs> Uh, the one that, the real one, of course, doesn't ring <laughs> anymore. <laughs> anymore. But we say this rings for liberty. And that's what you represent in terms of your creativity. <laughs> Zomon, I'm going to ask you to say a few words as well. Zomon represents the African filmmakers in the city. He does real voices and does great work. Um. I'm sorry I'm quite unprepared for this as Oliver went off script. <laughs> so it's, um, it's a great honor for me as an emerging filmmaker in Philadelphia. Um, what, what I'm really interested in is documenting the experiences of the African immigrant community in Philadelphia, the vibrant community that we all live in. Mm -hmm. And uh, Usman Simbet, through his work, is, is an inspiration from seeing his first film, Borom Saret, that we aired, that we screened here at the Africa Film Series that we, uh, that we do. Um, it's truly an inspiration to be, to share a podium with such an eminent filmmaker who's been the voice of so many African people. He's given voice to the voiceless, and he's been able to articulate the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the trials and tribulations and successes and joy of African people, a true griot in the, in, in the modern sense, a great storyteller. It gives me great pleasure and great honor to give this Liberty Bell on behalf of the city and Oliver and everybody. Here. Thank you. Um, Eve, where's where's Eve? I'm going to call on you, Eve. I'd like for you to come forward. Eve is with Dwayne Mars. He's French, and he really is the underwriter of this reception. And so we can't. If we got every other community. We've got to have someone represent the Francophone community. <laughs> yeah, yeah, merci beaucoup. Um, uh, it was Sagi mentioned that he is uh, both African and uh, American. I just became a, an, Amer an American citizen in, in July. I happen to be a Frenchman who was also born in Africa. Uh, so perhaps, perhaps, like Osagi, who knows? Uh, but. Uh, Are you okay with me on all that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Dwayne Morris, uh, of which I'm a partner, is very pleased to underwrite this uh, this wonderful event. Uh, we um, we you know we've been involved with the uh, international house. We're trying to support the international house, and it's wonderful to have events like like this one tonight, and to as Osaki said, to try to to bridge to bridge the gaps among the cultures, Africa, America, France, Europe, and do it with culture, do it with the arts. And it's wonderful to have an esteemed master uh, like Usman Simbeni tonight to help us bridge the gap among the different cultures and perhaps bring, at least for one night, some peace in this world. Thank you. Thank you. Bonsoir. Good evening. Je vous remercie tous. I thank all of you wholeheartedly. Je ne suis pas homme de parole ou de discours. I am not used to making speeches. I'm rather walking in the field in Africa. Et quand j'ai des arrêts de halte comme celui-ci, but during my trips when I have stops like this one, it goes straight to my heart. Et là-bas chez nous. And back home, Quand il le, le blues, and oui. sometimes when I feel the blues, Et je pense à ceux qui à le monde, and I think of all those who have honored me throughout the world, ce sont les and that's very encouraging for me. Je sais que pas pour I, I know this won't allow me to build là, the castles, 
l'artiste en a besoin. But I think an artist needs this kind of gathering and encouragement. Les pensez que quelque part il y a des gens qui suivent leur rire, qui suivent tes traces. Just to think that somewhere people are following your footsteps. Mais pour le film que nous allons voir tout à l'heure. Right, right now we're about to see the film. Je souhaiterais qu'on en parle franchement. And I would like us to have a very frank discussion after the screening. Pour moi, l'artiste n'a pas raison. For me, the artist is not always right. Je suis la conscience de mon peuple. Maybe I am the unexpressed consciousness of my people. Ce qui vous donne le droit de me corriger. Which also gives you the right <coughs> to correct me, to guide me, de me guider. to guide me, afin que nous partions. so that we can do better. La là. Uh, for me, that's the purpose of art. Uh, to admire it. De loin dire que nous avons tous and from distance, to be able to say that we all have participated. Tout à nous and right now, as I said, we are going to exchange views. Nous notre a and uh, we'll see our own vision of Africa. De ce que que ce pose. And what kind of problems we are faced with. Et nous serons entre nous -mêmes. And then we'll be among ourselves. Que je fais ce soir ici, and what I'm doing here tonight, ne que une innovation pour moi. Uh, don't think that it's something new for me. Dans je le fais cinq ou six fois. I do it at least five to six times each year. Pour le film que vous allez voir ce soir. And again, as I said, the film you're about to see tonight, et déjà cinq rencontres avec les femmes. I have already had five meetings with groups of women. Mm. Que nous and again, I hope tonight, again, we are going to have that kind of dialogue. Je pense que nous tous et and I think we are all responsible, men and women. Because you can easily project how many young girls are going to die out of this procedure this year. Merci Thank you very much for that. We have to uh, go downstairs to the theater, please. Okay. There are reserved seats for you. Um, we'd like for you to move as quickly as possible. Uh, and we're going to have a, a little, some men is going to speak a little bit before the film. But if everyone, thank you so much for coming. I don't know. Hey, Karen thank you. No, International House is an independent institution. No, we're not a part of Penn. Penn is our great neighbor. But we are a totally independent institution. We've been here 96 years, looking forward to celebrating our 100 very soon. And in this house are 380 residents from over 58 countries who attend 26 different educational institutions. Some of them are also interns at some of our companies. Penn has created an extraordinary body of work celebrating the heroism of everyday people and their struggle for lasting and progressive social change. As many films and novels carry with them a basic message of pride and confidence in the heritage and culture of Africa's native people, he remains at 81 a committed revolutionary artist a driving force both in African cinema and world cinema. It's a great honor to introduce him to you tonight. Please welcome to introduce his new film, Malade, Mr. Usman Sembeh. Les femmes savent que les parties intimes ne sont pas faciles à bord. 
and you know, when you know woman, you know there are some very intimate subjects that are very difficult to tackle with. <laughs> but we did the best we could. And uh, we have already presented this film to a lot of uh, women groups. And then those women groups also introduced the film to other women. And I think we have managed to trigger some reaction <laughs> and also to provoke some thought and also different positions about the topic. That was my whole purpose. I don't really want to be right. I'm not trying to show I'm more intelligent than anybody else. And I think Africa is in the hand of African women and African men. And I don't think nobody will come from the outside world, be it the United States or Europe, to help us change Africa. But how? I think that's the question. And I'm not a visionary. And I'm not really, I don't have a monopoly over any science. But I know that all the people around the world have gone through the same histories. And I know that I'm convinced I was never born slave, I was born free. And nobody will reduce my wife and children to slavery. You could kill me and kill my family. But for me, that's the whole issue. Like we do in the villages in Africa, I would like to invite you to an open discussion and to look at, to face reality with a lot of courage so that we can make progress. And that is the beginning and the end of my work. And after the screening, I come and talk to you again. And so that we can exchange views. Have a good evening. Thank you for staying. I'm going to turn the evening over to you uh, very shortly. Um, the way this is going to go uh, is you'll ask your question, and I'll repeat it for Mr. Gajiko. Uh, Mr. Sendin will answer. Um, I just wanted to kind of break the ice by asking a question, if I may. Um, in recent interviews, Mr. Sendin, has referred to Mulade as the most African of his films. I'm very curious about that, and I wanted to know what he meant by that. Uh, what I did in this film, actually, is to come up with a new writing. In Africa, we have a lot of languages. Because in Africa, because in Africa we have a lot of languages. And each of the languages has its own metaphors, its own symbols, its own colors, and its own way of doing things. When you want to make a film that will speak to the entire continent, and I think the best way to do that is to borrow from each language its own way of doing things and seeing things. So that you can use silence to speak. It's true that people usually say that Africans are very talkative, and that's true. Maybe it's true. But then cinema is a science. In two hours, you have to tell the story of an entire village. Therefore, you have to learn how to write cinema in a different way. 
We know how the Africans write the scripts. Of course, that lens and the reflective of the old social condition. We also know how Europeans write the scripts, the Japanese, the Japanese so on and so forth. Why, why shouldn't we invent something new from the synthesis of the richness of African cultures? That's what I try to do in this film. And that's also what I try to teach to young African filmmakers. But now to come back today to talk about the content of the film so that we can deal with the subject itself. It is said that according to statistics that there are 800 million people in Africa so continent. and this was continent this is variations and if you take the African Union it's comprised of about 54 states out of those 54, it is estimated that 38 still practice female genital mutilations. And at the time when AIDS is widespread throughout the continent. At a time when malaria kills more people than AIDS. That's very important for an artist. For me, it's for, a problem. for me, it's very, very important for an artist to deal with those issues. It's an decision. And actually, I'm really bottom line, I'm not interested in female genital mutilation in itself. How, what I'm interested in is how people are oppressed by being denied their freedom. For those of you who have visited Africa, and you will see how, how widespread independent radios are in Africa. And in some states, actually, the power structure is trying to reduce the number of radio stations. Therefore, for me, morally, is an issue that gravitates around freedom. I mean, it's good to ask oneself, does the child of five or six years have the authority or the possibility to make And you know it is the mothers who take the girls to have them cut. And we are told that it is a tradition. And when you take the practice of female genital mutilation, it really predates all official religions. Therefore, for me, it is, does not have anything to do with religion. The purification. And it does not have anything to do with purification. That, therefore, what is it about? We still have not found the answer to that question. But I think that in our march toward progress, we have to eradicate female genital in my country, we are 80% Muslim. And in the Quran, they mention nulle part on politiser les femmes. And you can read thoroughly the Quran; you would not find any mention of female genital mutilation. On ne dit pas tradition, but still we are told that it is tradition. Il y a des bonnes et des mauvaises traditions. But then there are good and bad traditions. Je pense que celle-ci est une mauvaise. And I think female genital mutilation is a bad tradition. Je peux me tromper, vous pouvez me le dire. I mean, if you think I'm mistaken, let me know. <laughs> now the discussion is over. Yes. is for me because I did the, not the translation but the adaptation because the original is in Bambara and if you take 
the region, some eastern Senegal, Mali, northern Cote d'Ivoire, and south of Burkina Faso, you have Bambara that is spoken, but in Cote d'Ivoire and Burkina Faso, they call it Jura. So what I tried to do was really to avoid a literal translation, because I, I realized there are many things, if I translated them literally in English, it would not make any sense. So what I tried to do is to maneuver between the two cultures, my, at least my knowledge of the American culture and my knowledge of the African culture, and to try to see in which way I could, I could change whatever was said in Bambara to make it significant in the English language. Is that, does that answer your question? Yes, so you, so you made those friends to capitalize the words and... Yes, well, you look at purification, and we, I use two words when it comes to human purification. I use two cats, capital C-U-G, and then purification. Now, those words are used according to the camp you are dealing with. For the supporters of civil gentle mutilation, they call it purification. But for the opponents, they use the word to cut. And I deliberately put capital P for purification and capital C to cut, just to highlight those two words. Thank you. Next question. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm listening. Go ahead. So is it fair to say from Chedu, Victoria Sin, Fakine, Fakine herself, and here with Kole uh, Adro, is it fair to say through your film that uh, women in Africa have been at the forefront of progress in Africa? Okay, the question is in regards to Mr. Sandin's previous films, Chedo and Black Girl, and whether or not women are at the forefront of social change, social progress in Africa, the theme that Mr. Sandin has returned to several times in his films. Uh, <laughs> you want to know? I'm a man, of course. I don't know why, I don't know why. At least I believe I'm a man. <laughs> if I'm you should mark a proper man. And I, I can also say that in Africa, women struggle very, very, very hard. It's only premier actually the kind of food. And they are the first one to suffer from any predicament we are going through. And I think they are the ones who are the trustees of African culture. Il y a des villes où le chômage est tel sans les femmes, les jobs ne reviennent pas de quoi There are some cities in which Unemployment rate is such that nobody would have survived if we were not sustained by the woman. Ce n'est pas pour nous choisir les femmes. I have not really made a deliberate choice to choose those women. Je pense que c'est la seule qui nous veut les rassurer. But I think it is a it is a nourishing element of our society. Je ne suis pas déçu du gouvernement des hommes. I am not disappointed by the male leadership. But I think the strength and the solidity of Africa rests on women nowadays. And I think you have to take a tour of the continent to see in what condition they live. They raise their children. They support their husbands and their mothers. Pour moi, en tant que créateur, c'est pourquoi que j'ai choisi. And for me, as a creative artist, that is the path I have chosen. That's my vision. Et puis, je dis, l'Afrique est une femme. And then I usually say that Africa is a woman. Next question. Yes, sir. You're next. Okay. You're next. I'm sorry, you're next. Okay. This gentleman. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then I'm very pleased to meet you and uh, it's a great honor for me to witness you and uh, I was introduced to your work through God's Beats of Wood, the novel, and when I wrote an essay on Camp de Fierario for Third Text, the journal in 1996, I raised that question, when are you going to film God's Beats of Wood? That's one question. And the second question is this. <laughs> the second question is 
question is this. In the movie Mulade, we saw lots of girls being uh, terrorized uh, as a result of uh, uh, female <coughs> genital mutilation. How about little boys who are also genitally mutilated? Why is that not an issue? Is it because? Is it because male genital mutilation is acceptable in the West? Thank you. This is a loaded question. You're going to get, you're going to get a, an equally loaded answer, I assure you. Um, the first, just to repeat, the first part of the question is when is there going to be a filmed version of God's Bits of Women, which was one of Mr. Sandin's early novels. The second question was why male genital mutilation was not represented in Molade. There's a, there's a caveat. Also. Is it because that the West condones it that male genital mutilation was not featured in Mulan? Did that do the question justice? Yeah. Excellent. Il y a une chose que nous définis jamais. Le monde occidental n'est pas mon focus. Let me just make this clear: the West has never been my reference. The problems we are having back home, we have to solve them. Et entre la circonstance des hommes et l'exigence, il y a un choix à faire des États. And I think between the issue of circumcision and that of female genital mutilation, a choice needs to be made. L'exigence fait plus de mal de ravage, and I think female genital mutilation has more negative consequences than circumcision. Et si à côté de vous, si vous connaissez quelqu'un de l'hypocrite de la Somalie et de lui faire demander lui, and if you want to commence à se faire, and if among your neighbors you happen to have someone from Ethiopia, Eritrea, or Somalia, ask them the question. Nous devons avoir le courage de mettre les hommes africains à nu et de mettre à nu. And I think we need to face our responsibility. Et c'est pourquoi moi j'ai choisi l'exigence. And that's why I made the deliberate choice to point out to female genital mutilation. Et ce n'est pas pour faire plaisir à l'Occident. And I'm not doing it to please the West. Je sais que tout mon retard, tout mon malheur me vient de l'Occident. And I'm very aware of the fact that all my predicaments come to me from the West. Je ne suis pas venu ici pour tant la main. And I have not come here to ask for subsidies. I am coming here with my fist clenched to talk to you about my country. Of course the West has the right to have its opinion on us. You cannot stop them from having that opinion. The same way we have the right to have our own views and opinions on them. Now to make your question more profitable to the entire audience, I have the impression that you are reacting, but you are not being proactive. Control is African, like many Africans. And if you do remember our ancient poets, Qui pleurait mon père le grand a violé mon père le grand a violé ma mère. But he's referring here to David Job in Kudu Pino, who used to say that the white has raped my mother. The white has been raped. Nous sommes des gens qui sont incapables de diriger nos pays. Nous viens d'ici demander de l'argent. We are having the same song from our present leadership who cannot solve our problems and who come here to the West to cry. Et qui ferme les yeux sur le sida. And who are really ignoring pandemic of AIDS et qui sont pressés d'avoir des maisons à l'Amérique ou en Europe et qui sont eager to acquire villas in the West et on le reçoit dans les salons bien frustrés and of course they are always received in very in very in very comfortable living non c'est que je mange le chamin de cette place I never eat that kind of bread je veux dialoguer avec mon peuple now I want to have a dialogue with my people 
Mais si vous voulez me mettre nu, mettez-moi nu. Parce que si vous voulez me strip me naked, vous pouvez faire ça. Mais je ne vais pas à ce que l'Europe soit mon but. Mais je ne vais jamais accepter pour l'Ouest de mettre ma propre agenda. Je ne sais pas toutes les femmes noires qui se sont là. And another fact also is that it is not all throughout all Africa that female genital mutilation is practiced. And if you read Chef Andre Job's anterior culture noir, the anteriority of black culture, you will know that it is not practiced everywhere in Africa. You are talking about circumcision. Il faut voir le quoi le premier testament and you have to see the old testament après la mort de Christ and after the death of Christ Saint Paul et Saint Pierre à Jérusalem Saint Paul et Saint Pierre à Jérusalem l'ont éparti avec les excusés one went one went with us how do you call it the second sign voilà le problème mais là c'est au médecin de nous dire si il faut se conduire en l'homme c'est bien ou mal now I think we need to turn to the expert to the doctors to tell us whether it is good or bad to have circumcision, male circumcision. And the people raise the issue in Egypt. But then in Egypt, excision is authorized. But then it is not done the usual way. The, 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 the traditional way with rusting eyes. Mais vous pouvez aller à, à la, à, 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 au dispensaire, à l'hôpital ou ailleurs. But you can go to any clinic or any hospital, have it performed in a very, how do you call it, sanitized environment. Mais c'est fou. But for me, that's a false issue. C'est une recherche que nous devons faire. And I think we ought to ourselves to do more research about this. C'est un problème de liberté. And because for me, it is the freedom of Africa. Demandez aux femmes qui ont été excisées comment est leur douleur. Now you have to ask the woman who are on the ground that experience what kind of excruciating pain are you doing? Why are those same women taking their daughters to submit them to the same women? According to some doctors, it is a infirm to practice female genital mutilation. It's just like cutting the head of a penis of a man. Je ne suis pas médecin, je ne suis pas médecin, et je ne vous ferai pas couper malgré mon âge. Mais, pas de ma âge, je ne veux pas que quelqu'un capte cette parole. Tu vois, je reviens que le groupe va lui dire. Sorry, Abba, ta question regarde l'adaptation de la Black Spirit of Wood. Je vous que personnellement, c'est dans le cas de conscience. I really, I should confess to you, I'm having a hard time making a decision about that. Or they are to that militant just at present on the show. So far, it has been adapted to theater many times, at least three times. Mais le côté au cinéma, but to put it on the screen, est-ce possible ou non? Is it? I really wonder if it is possible or not. And as a cinéaste, as a filmmaker, I really have my doubts. Ready for answering? The book is taught throughout Africa in many languages, Arabic, Portuguese, and what have you. And I think people like it that way, and I'm happy about that. Est-ce que on peut dire que les gens aiment peut être voilà pour le cinéma? Now, can you really adapt in a very satisfactory way? A book that is already like. Apparently, I am more than Danny Glover, and right now, my friend Danny Glover, who is pushing that issue, who is really, literally haunting me about that issue. Because là, où je suis, j'ai rien décidé. But up to right now, I have not decided anything yet. C'est une décision qui vous coûte. But it's something. It's a very costly decision I have to make. But yet, j'ai plus la force de le faire. But now, maybe I no longer have the strength to make that decision. Mais je n'ai pas d'autre pour le faire. But if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. Et le cinéma et la littérature sont deux choses différentes. And for me, cinéma and literature are complete, two completely different media. Donc pour moi, le plus bon film ne peut pas, ne peut pas la valeur d'un livre. For me, the best film cannot do justice to a book. Et souvent, les films tirés des bons romans les ont trahis. And most of the time, films that are adapted from novels have ended up betraying the novels. That's where I am at this point. Maybe you have a reason to convince me. 
Maybe I'll be convinced to do it someday, but right now I'm in limbo, so to speak. Thank you. I promise you the next question. Thank you. Um, I wanted to say, first of all, that I enjoyed the film, and I think it was done um, tastefully and very educationally, and well done from a woman's point of view. I cried throughout the movie, the movie and I um, understood, I felt like I was um, in the character of the women in the village. Um, second of all, I want to ask what year is, or, or time frame is this film Okay, the question was, uh, what year or what time frame is this film representing? I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with prison day situation in Africa. Morale is a third in the trilogy, and as I said, Morale is the second of a trilogy of three films. La première c'est de Fakine, ça s'est passé en ville. The first of the series was Fakine, which happens in the urban area of the city. La seconde ça se passe dans la campagne. In this case, it happens in the country, in the rural area. À peu près sur le même âge. And if you notice, the two women are the same age. Dans deux situations différentes. But in two different situations. Mais ce sont des faits vrais qui m'ont inspiré. But I was inspired by two stories. Actuellement, des faits vrais actuellement. For instance, so there are real issues, that are real problems that happen in our lifetime. Il y a énormément de femmes qui luttent contre. Right now, there are a lot of women who are struggling, who are fighting against the system, and who are trying to explain why. Ce n'est pas un effet de mode, c'est un effet de douleur. It is not an issue of fashion. It is not because it's trendy. It's because people are suffering from it. I think we have time for one or two more questions. Yes. Could you tell us a little about um, how the women's groups have reacted to the film that you've shown the film to? Okay, the question was, uh, how have the women's groups reacted to the film uh, after they've seen it? Oh, they laugh a lot. They laugh a lot. They laugh a lot. People like to laugh. Ça ne pas dire qu'on n'est pas attentionné. But that doesn't mean that they were not paying attention. Et dans les discussions, and they brought book and they brought they contributed a lot to the discussion. Uh, of course you have the two camps, those are four of it, for it and the other four against it. La discussion s'engage sur la pollution. And now the issue is to know whether or not an end should be put to FGM. Il y a des états qui ont voté des lois contre. And there are a lot of states that have passed legislation condemning FGM. And there are some other states that still do not have the courage to do so. And there it is not the pressure from the woman, it is pressure from the men, from the leadership. And there are, for instance, some corners of Africa, for instance, in northern Nigeria, where I would never take this film nowadays. I was in northern Cameroon, but I should say I have not gone to, uh, to northern Nigeria yet. So, so just to tell you what is at stake when you talk about freedom. And the women who fight against FGM in that region of northern Nigeria are reduced to silence. So it's a very tricky issue. Right? Yes, okay, one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, it's not actually a question. I would just like to uh, um, take up where um, Brother Senben talked about not uh, being worried about what the West thinks. Um, because one of the uh, most continuously heard criticisms about his films is that they are too plainly didactic. And uh, the ideology is. Um, is, is, is to, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm referring to Fahrenheit at 9-11. If you can say that is a film that deserves an Oscar and criticize the audience for being too propagandistic and we are dealing definitely with double standards. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, if we're having Sorry, um, the gentleman made a comment that some of the criticism of this film, Molade, is that this film is far too didactic in its no, presentation. All, it's all, it's all his films. All of his films. I'm sorry, not just Molade. All. all. Um, the gentleman also commented on the fact that a film like Fahrenheit 9-11, which he believes to be a propagandistic film, is a film that is likely going to be nominated for an Oscar. This was his comment, and Mr. Semben. Yeah, actually, to follow Mr. Semben, I just would like to follow up on what you said. I mean, I was at Cannes when the film was shown, and I think two or three days later, there was a nice piece in the New York Times, wondering, I'm just going to sum, sum up here, I mean, why wasn't Moalade in the general competition? Why was it, as usual, marginalized from this category called a certain regard. And a month later, I was with him, or, uh, well, no, two months later, I was with him in Toronto again. The film, I mean, it was always sold out, but it was again in this small corner called the planet Africa. It's like, we are in a different planet here. So I can't hear what he said. But I let Mr. Seven give his answer. Secretary Everett, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. Here. I imagine you are among them, but I have to speak to my Lucy. That, that's my, that's what my main concern. Can you project the film of Villa when I show the film in Venice? I sit back there. I mean, you short. And people are sitting on the floor. They don't even have chairs like you have. Quel est le niveau critique, le niveau intellectuel? What, what, what is an intellectual level? Et quand derrière il y a des gens comme vous et moi qui recherchent des photos. And when behind those people sitting on the floor, there are people like you and me sitting on chairs high up there. Mais je vous parle à mon peuple. But I'm not here for people sitting on high up there. Il faut que nous trouvions une culture qui comprenne. So as I said, I have to find a new right in cinematographic writing that can speak to those people sitting on the ground. Et les niveaux de compréhension sont différents. And of course, you have different levels of understanding. Et chacun comprend, interprète. And each level understands and interprets it in its own way. Je n'ai rien fait de nouveau. And in this film, I have not done anything new. I have not invented anything. Je vous assure, je n'ai rien fait de nouveau. And I rated it. I have not invented anything. Le conteur africain, the African storyteller, Conan Touré, who was who was surrounded by people. Et des amis dans le groupe conteur. He was at the same time his own director. His his own director. Le premier comédien. He was his own comedian and musician, and he was his own musician. He imitated to play one, and he imitated all of them too. He did. He's a one-man show. He simply imitated, and that's what I inherited. She selected me, and that's what inspires me. Come on, parle à mon peuple. How to la confiance de mon peuple? My main purpose is how to speak to my people, people, how to raise my people's level of consciousness. Not to listen and to know me. To make our people understand that we hold our destiny in our hands. That's all my purpose is. Come on, come on. Thank you very much. Thank you. I believe this world, you know that never because the second is just around the corner. Please do yourself a favor, go and vote.